Ooh, now they look good. Now they look very good. So filming yourself is one, very difficult, it's quite hard to do, very time consuming, and two, it can get quite boring. So that's why I recently put out a post on Facebook telling people that I was looking for a challenge and that I would record their event, whatever that happened to may be, and um, I'd do it for free, just so I had uh, the opportunity or a challenge to film someone else other than myself and to get experience in filming other events. And no word of a lie, I must have had a hundred messages, easily a hundred messages, offering for me to film their event for them, free of charge of course. Most of these were requests for me to film weddings. I do want to film a wedding, I do want that experience. I don't want to do all weddings. So, inevitably, I had to let a few people down. But, these are the five that I've decided to do. So I decided to do a boxing event, a charity boxing event for uh, an old friend who I used to go to school with. I have decided to do a wedding, which is a big grand wedding. There's like four or five hundred people over in the country. So that should be a good one. Um, I've agreed to do a promotional video for, again, a friend I went to school with for his golf club. I agreed to do a roller derby, derby, roller derby. Basically, a group of women fighting on roller skates. That one should be quite interesting. And I also agreed to do a charity event for a dog show competition. So all basically charities. So the only, um, the only caveat that I placed on me filming was, one, you weren't planning on having it filmed anyway because if you were, you should definitely pay a professional. And two, there could be um, there could be no expectations. Because I was doing it for free, I didn't want any stress or pressure of expectations. And so at the end of the day, they would get whatever it was I produced. Obviously I would try and do my best for them and make the best possible video I could. But I didn't want to introduce the stress, the client customer relationship thing. Doing it for free, not taking any money, so. I do what I feel is good and I'll do the best job I can. And all those people were happy with it, so hence I'm filming all of those events. These have come from China, so I, um, I hope I don't catch that coronavirus. I hate beer. So, I think two weeks ago I filmed the first of those events, which was the boxing event with a chap called Mark Ellens and I put that video out on YouTube and it's done pretty well. It's had nearly a thousand views. It took me like 18 hours to edit and I um, sent him the first cut just to get some feedback to make some changes but he was over the moon the first cut and he had literally shared it that evening so by the time I woke up in the morning it was out in the public domain so I couldn't make any more changes even if I wanted to. But it was out, it was good, it's done well and I really really enjoyed it. It was nice to get that different perspective from behind the camera and directing people. So I thought the rest of this video I would dedicate to a director's walkthrough of my cinematic boxing video. So what do you think of the new background lights then? Do you like them? The idea was to try and get a bit of separation, a bit of depth between me and the background. And they look pretty cool. So yeah, let me know in the comments box below what you think. Um, and whilst you do that, I'm going to take you upstairs to the study to walk you through this cinematic boxing video, the director's cut. So the, um, the cinematic boxing video. Um, the boxing event was at the Pyramids, which is a swimming venue, but also a live venue down in um, South Sea in Portsmouth. Uh, I had no clue what to expect. He literally emailed me at the beginning of the week, said, come film it if you like. I said, okay. And I went there on the Saturday. So I had no idea what to expect and kind of tried to make the best out of it, to be honest. What I did do uh, initially and to begin with was I storyboarded. I had a look on YouTube. I looked at some film reference sites of 
cinematic boxing or sport that I like the look of. And then I saved um, screenshots of those on my phone. So I kind of had a rough storyboard of some of the shots I wanted to get. What I would do differently is I'd be, be more forthcoming, I'd be more upfront and I'd say, look, do you mind doing this? Or actually, do you know what, can you just do that again for me from a different angle, just so the shots are a little bit more set up. And while people see that as uh, contrived or fake, it's not, it's just about trying to get the best shot you can. But to be fair, for a two minute cinematic boxing video, my first ever attempt, I'm happy with it. It's, I, I think it's good. So I'm gonna walk you through it. And I'm gonna put my headphones on. So straight away, um, the music started too late. It should have started as it faded in, but it actually didn't start until the full picture was there. So on the day, I was just shooting um, just as much as I could. So just random ring shots, different angles. I was on manual focus so I could get a bit of depth of field between the ring and kind of the background and stuff. Um, and on the day, I was just shooting everything. I had no idea. And it's only when it came to the editing that I had all the footage. I was trying to put a story together um, and, try and try and build something from all the random footage I shot. Um, and it sprung to my head, actually, you know what? If I just the build up is a build up to a fight, so I had a lot of the ring shots all together and I thought, actually I've got some quite good shots of Mark. So I, I had the idea of cutting from an empty ring back to Mark preparing to get into that empty ring. And obviously Mark being the subject in the box, so I wanted the emphasis on him, so the sound design um, obviously there's the background track of music playing, but the sound design was basically every time I would cut back to Mark from the ring, there'd be a, like a punch what in, in music terms, a cinematic hit where it would go right, ring, 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 poof, Mark, ring, 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 poof, Mark. And I kind of carried that through. Although it was on a gimbal, some of the shots were shaky, but I don't know whether that adds to it or whether I would prefer them to be smoother. Shots of the ring. So because I wasn't setting the shots up, it was hard to try and get like things in the foreground, my subject mark in the middle and then the background to kind of give the shot some depth, but some of these shots just seems to have happened quite naturally, which is good. And this is one of the shots I'm really, really proud of. It's it's literally just me walking up to the curtain and walking through the curtain, but they are, they are two separate shots. So I added a cross dissolve between when I got to the curtain and come out of the curtain to make it look like I was passing through. And with the music timed, I think that worked really well. And the smoke, the guy was testing the smoke machine. So it was like, it was like perfectly set up for me. There was no fake smoke literally just a cross dissolve between the shots. Again, because it was shot in slow motion, um, there was no sound to this. So literally all of the sound you're hearing from the music, um, from the cinematic hits, the boxing hits, the, 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 the scraping of the bandages, all that kind of stuff um, has been added in. The heartbeat, the breath, the crowd cheering, the bells, every bit of sound is completely fake. Uh, that sound design I had to put it in. So this shot where I'm walking up to the ring in slow motion um, and then I fade into Mark walking into the ring. Obviously they're two completely different times of the day. And the original shot of that ring, um, it was a lot wider it was really bright and um, Lisa pointed out it just looked silly. It didn't contrast with the shot where I was fading into Mark walking into the ring, which was more atmospheric and dark. So what I did with that ring shot when I was walking in is actually I made it a lot darker. I put a mask around the ring and feathered it so the ring was bright, but everything around the outside was dark. Um, and the sound I put over the top of people chatting because actually walking to the ring, it was empty, but I put the sound of the crowd over the top of that shot um, as well as Mark walking through and cutting backwards between them. It was quite seamless and you could be mistaken to think it was kind of like the same shot. 
almost. So right there, that's one part I don't like, is the actual gimbal was too quick to move. So it was really smooth following him down the aisle, but then literally it kind of had a jerky movement to follow him. And I really like that. So cutting between the, um, the wide ring shots and the close-ups and the movement in the ring, basically I had one camera, a wide camera, set up looking into the ring and that wide and I just constantly recorded. I was running around the ring um, you probably saw me in one of these shots, I was running around with the gimbal, jumping up on stage, getting down, trying to get all these action shots. And it worked out quite well. Now considering Mark K.O. the chat, in 50 seconds, he went down once like you just saw, and then literally he went down straight after, I had no fight for just to work with. So a couple of comments from people were like, oh, I should have put more of the fight in there, that kind of stuff. There wasn't more of a fight, he KO'd him in 50 seconds. I didn't have a lot to work with, but I think it looks good. He's a beast, look at that. So that was the shot, that was the last one, that kind of, the guy goes down now. Um, I had footage of him going down, laying on the mat, I had footage of Mark there holding his head, supporting him while the paramedics came in to make sure he was okay, but I just felt it was disrespectful putting that in, in the video. So. I don't even show him hitting the ring. I literally just fade to Mark walking out with the crowd cheering, heartbeat in the background, which is a bit slower now to show that the fight is done. And then fading out to black. And that was it. What I will say about the whole entire video is it had a lot of color grading um, and a lot of playing around with lighting, etc. because the actual footage I got didn't look anything like the final end product. There were a couple of shots I would change and redo and I probably on the day would have liked to, like I said, set up more shots. But apart from that, I'm happy. I liked it. I thought it was a good video for my first attempt of filming someone else. So there you go, I've walked you through the video, told you what I liked, told you what I didn't like. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments box below any comments, questions or feedback because for now I am done. I'm now gonna stay put in this seat right here with my laptop, with my headphones, with my coffee, and I'm now gonna edit this footage from these two cameras to create the vlog. Because I've already filmed a bit downstairs the other day of setting up the lights and, and talking about it. So yeah, have yourselves a very good weekend and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Why did the wind change?